part two. Part two. Numero dos. Okay? Okay. We'll get straight back into it. So, you know where we left off. Oh, I probably should say, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. After the intro, sorry, my bad, forgot about that because um, I'm obviously filming this back to back. But yeah, let's just get in with doing more makeup and telling more ghost stories. Fun, okay? Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. A lot of these stories aren't necessarily mine to tell, if that makes any sense. Um, not in like a bad way, like I'm telling other people's stories, I'm just kind of speaking from like family experiences as to why we um, came to the conclusion that that house was ex. ex what was I even going to say? That, that house was haunted. Maybelline, the Colossal Big Shot Volume Express Mascara. So the next story kind of type thing that I'm gonna tell is involving like my uh, brother Josh. Mum always used to say that he had um, a ghost living in his cupboard at the time because he would completely shut his cupboard doors. Now they were rolling doors, they weren't like, um, like opening doors, they were like sliding rolling doors with mirrors on them. Um, they were like that his were broken okay the wheels on the bottom were non-existent they weren't there anymore so it wasn't like you could easily slide it like anything could easily slide and it would be open you had to push that thing really hard and you also had to kind of like tilt it up to get it to move anywhere um it's hard to explain but basically his cupboard doors were broken and they were really 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 hard to maneuver and open until he fixed them later on but that's not the point they were hard to open and maneuver that's how i remember them at least so before any Body, like writes down in the comments like oh it was probably just a gust of wind it wasn't okay he's pardon he would always close his cupboard doors obviously because like you know that's stereotypical there's a monster in my cupboard like every kid just closes their doors duh but um yeah not a monster a ghost how about that he would wake up in the middle of the night or wake up the next morning it doesn't matter when he'd wake up he would just wake up and his cupboard door would be open ever so slightly it would just be pushed open and again like i explained to you that's hard to do and the fact that he didn't wake up from someone opening his cupboard or coming into his room and opening his cupboard, like, it wasn't a person, just saying. He would have woken up from that, and I think anyone would have woken up from that, like, it wasn't a pleasant sound when you open those doors. Also, I'm pretty sure his bedroom door was ever so slightly creaky, or it was the handle. I think those handles used to be loud, in a sense. I don't remember, because it's been a while since I've lived in that house, but something about those doors was creaky. Because I remember whenever I'd open mine and I wanted there to be no sound, I would turn the handle and I would push it as fast as I could and it wouldn't creak but if I pushed it slowly it would creak so I think his was probably similar in that regard I think they were all similar in that regard I think it was just like all the doors in the house um, but that's what I would do when I was being sneaky so hey mum anyways so point being that it wasn't a person okay it wasn't a person opening his door his cupboard door every night it was something that lived in the cupboard um, he would also explain as well that there was also this area in his cupboard that was always so much darker than the rest it didn't really matter what you did how the light was facing like if you shone a torch on it like nothing really mattered it didn't matter what you did there was always this dark space in his cupboard that no one could explain he had told my mom about it several times and she had checked it out several times each time she would be left wondering how like well she kind of i mean you can put two and together she knew exactly what it was she knew that that's where something lived um but it was you can just picture that, you know, just opening your cupboard and there's always just this one dark spot. All the rest of the cupboard is evenly lit because that's just the way the lighting was. But this one area was just always dark. Always. No matter what you did. Didn't matter what you did. Didn't matter if you shone a torch on it. It was just always dark. So, that's saying something. Maybe one day, <laughs> if you're ever watching this, Josh, maybe one day you can actually help me explain those stories and whatever you experience a little bit better. Because, obviously, you experienced it firsthand and I would only ever experience it secondhand. So... I'm just gonna start bronzing my face. Yeah, okay, anyways, so this next story um, has to do with my other brother, Jesse, for when he did live in the house. Um, also, if you haven't seen part one, go back to last week's video and watch part one. Um, otherwise, you know, these stories probably won't make sense. I'm just gonna quickly butt in here and say that mum always used to say that the ghosts that live in our house, um, lived in our house, were friendly towards women um, and not so friendly towards men. So. You know, uh, the ghost played games on me and mum, but never harmed us in any sort of way. Um, and, you know, that whole moving the cupboard and a dark entity just always being in Josh's cupboard all the time, no matter what you did, 
it's not necessarily causing harm to Josh, and I don't know if he had an experience with actual like harm inflicted on him. Um, but I'm just saying, like, nothing physical ever happened to the girls. It was always just kind of games. Whereas the boys, each except for Zach, don't know if Zach ever experienced anything. Never asked him. He was too young. But um, it was always something physical. So like physically moving Josh's cupboard every single night, and physically making a space in his cupboard dark all the time. So probably just that was probably something just standing there all the time. But I don't know. There was never any physical occurrences or harm done to any girls. But the boys are a different story. So I'm going into Jesse's story that he told next. Um, this story kind of shook everyone when he told this because like it's definitely the scariest incident that happened in the house. Um, and I don't know, I'm just going to be brutally honest right now. Um, he's my brother and I'm always going to believe him and everything like that. Um, so I'm not like belittling any of what he said. Um, when you'll hear it, you'll understand how it's like almost in a way hard to believe. But again, everyone experiences like literally stuff like this all the time. Like it's known, it happens all the time. It's very much so real. So I'm not belittling what he said at all. But when he was at that age, it was really hard to tell when he was making fun of someone for believing in something or actually having an experience himself. I believe he had the experience himself because when he was telling it, he was very shaken up and you could tell that it mentally fucked him up a little bit in a sense. Um, so I think it was real. I just don't know if it was as graphic as it made, he made it seem. Um, again, I'm not trying to belittle his stories or anything like that. It was just very difficult to understand his sarcasm sometimes. And he's a little, I love you Jesse, but he's a little bit of a drama queen. So he might have hyped it up a little bit more than what actually happened. Um, but I believe him. I do believe that this is real. I just don't know if it's all exact, if that makes any sense. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to tell his story next. Um, he was sleeping. Um, he was sleeping. Um, he was sleeping. Fucking sick of people messing with me when I'm doing. You know, he was sleeping one night, you know, no, no different to any other night, except that it was. This is hard to explain, so it's something that you're gonna have to kind of maybe do to yourself to understand what I'm about to explain. But if you, this sounds weird, but bear with me, this is the way he explained it. If you just rub your arm, like, back and forth, pressing relatively hard, really, really fast, you'll feel the friction of what you're doing, and you'll feel your arms start to heat up from that friction and everything like that. Weird sort of analogy or whatever, I guess, but it's just how he explained it, and I'm just going to explain how he explained it, obviously. Um, it was his experience, not mine. So basically, he was sleeping one night, and he felt that happening on his forehead. He felt like someone was rubbing their hand back and forth across his forehead really, really fast. So he kind of woke up from it, and was kind of like, you know, like, what the fuck, like, why is my forehead so hot? That's kind of the way he explained it. So obviously, as soon as he woke up, he kind of was like, what the fuck, and he sat up. As soon as he sat up, he felt someone slap him across the face. So... You can kind of see what I mean, physical harm. It didn't like him, it never liked him. So he felt someone slap him across the face and obviously he got freaked out so he got up and turned the light on to see if someone was in his room and no one was in his, no one was in his room. Now, I mentioned the sliding doors earlier. Everyone, every single bedroom had those sliding doors in them um, with the big mirrors. So he walked over to the sliding doors because there were huge mirrors on and he looked in the mirror and he had a red handprint across his face from where he had just been slapped. So, that's his story. Don't really know what he did after that. I think he ended up just being like, what the hell, and going back to bed, because there was really not much he could do at that point. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, what are you going to do at that point? Like, th that's just that. So, um, he ended up telling us all the next day, and we were all kind of like, what the heck? But that's Jesse's story. I really need to get better at, you know, doing my makeup while talking. Okay, so I've probably completely changed color since the last time you saw me. I'm now orange, because um, I, kind of maybe sort of got a little bit carried away in telling a story and I wasn't paying attention to where I was putting my bronzer and I ended up using it as like a setting powder and just setting my whole face. I don't know why I did that. I literally wasn't paying attention. So now I'm orange, okay? So we're going to ignore that. I tried my best to drag it down my neck, but as you can see, my shoulders are still white. So we're going to ignore that, okay? We're going to pretend that never happened. But anyways, um, because I'm going to cut a lot of that out because I literally look like an idiot doing it, I don't really know where I was up to. So I'm going to just kind of start again. Um... But the next experience that I'm going to be talking about is like my my dad. Um, he was the biggest skeptic of them all. He didn't believe in ghosts. I still need to be doing something with my face. I need to stop sitting here. Okay. He didn't believe in ghosts at all. Um, he would have just laughed at you and said, yeah, right. Yeah, I'm putting, I feel beautiful on my cheeks. Okay. Um, yeah, so he was the biggest skeptic of them all. Did not believe in ghosts whatsoever, like at all. 
but you know, again, he was a male, and ghosts probably didn't like him because hey, he didn't believe in them, and he was a male. So whatever happened in this ghost's life, obviously, was more male orientated, and they did not like that. So yes, maybe it was a female. I don't know. Just because they didn't like males doesn't mean it had to be a female. Anyways, that's the experience isn't like that amazing or extravagant or anything like that. It's pretty standard in ghost stories. But dad was sleeping and he got the covers ripped off him. So, like I said, it was pretty standard. Like, you hear that all the time. Um, oof. Um, yeah, it's pretty standard. You hear that happening all the time. Well, that happened to him. Um, so, yeah. Jesse keeps standing outside my window to put stuff in the bin. It's really annoying how it keeps stopping. Okay, now that I'm freaking 17 shades darker, I'm going to use the golden shade from the Soph. X Revolution palette and use that as my highlight. Ta -ta 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 -ta. What was I saying? Yeah, so that just kind of got. Oof, oh dear. Oh dear. Went for a Jaclyn Hill effect and it did not work out. Okay, so that just kind of you know, got the covers ripped off him. Is what it is. Moving on. I don't know all the experiences that my mum has had. Um. Oh, I also can't tell you what dad thinks about after that whole experience because, um. I don't think he believes in ghosts. Like, it didn't, like, change his mind. It didn't be like. Oh my god, I believe in them now. I think it's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. So, yeah, he's very much like, I don't like that. So, yeah. Um, I can't tell you every experience that my mum has had because I actually don't know. But I do know that whenever she would sit down and, you know, watch TV for the night or whatnot, she would always hear things moving around in the garage. And she'd always be like, who's out in the garage right now at this hour moving things around and why? Why are they not in bed? So, she would hear things moving around in the garage and every now and then she'd pause whatever she was watching and she would go and check and sure enough there would be stuff that had moved around but no one in the garage to move them around and the way the house was set out it would have been very obvious if someone was coming in and out of the garage because of the back door the back door was loud so you would have heard someone coming through if they were like in the garage heard mum somehow pause the tv not that you would have heard that from the garage but somehow pause it and they were like oh gotta run you would have the only way you could have gotten back is through the back door and it is loud so obviously that didn't happen um but yeah so then she just go sit back down and be like kind of like what the heck and then you know press play and move on and then it would happen over and over and over again literally just like non-stop it would just keep happening and she would keep hearing things move around in the garage and she'd go and check and there would be nothing there so yeah that would happen like literally all the time um sorry right now i'm using these two shades and I'm just kind of putting that like all over where the blush and highlight would be just just because I just because I like it and I want to you know just just cause okay I was gonna do my eyebrows but can I be bothered I might do the Morphe eyebrow pencil and I'll be right back because I can't do this on camera okay my eyebrows are done they don't look the best but I don't really care um I'm trying to think if there was anything else like there was probably heaps of stuff that I just don't remember or either that I either just don't really remember right now or I blocked out which is very likely um I need to do my lips though I don't remember if there was any like personal experiences I had because obviously they're the most interesting ones because I can actually remember them and they were firsthand. I'll tell you one thing that really annoys me to this day is I used to have, just like pretty much everyone else, um, I used to have like the Apple iPod touch whatever. Um, obviously I don't have that anymore um, and I didn't have like iCloud or did it even have iCloud at the time like all the way back then? I don't know if that was the thing but basically what I'm trying to say is every single photo that was ever taken on that doesn't exist anymore and that pisses me off because on that iPod touch I took a photo just like a normal casual photo I don't remember who was with me I'm pretty sure I was taking it either with my cousin or my brother or like a cat or something I know something was in the photo with me well two things in the photo with me you'll understand in a second someone or something um so either an animal or a relative was in the photo with me but it was just like a casual like selfie sort of moment and you know I didn't think anything of it and I, I uploaded it. Oh, I wonder if since I'm I'm barely certain that I um, uploaded it to Instagram. I think I think I uploaded it to Instagram. So maybe it does exist on the internet somewhere. I haven't been able to ever find it though. But there is a there was there was a photo. Let me just not talk while I'm doing this. Okay, my lipstick is not even. But I'm gonna ignore that because I cannot be bothered anymore. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, so, basically, 
this photo may or may not be out there somewhere. I don't know, but I'm fairly certain that I uploaded it to Instagram, but it also might not have been. It also just might have been Snapchat, which obviously it wouldn't really be out there anywhere if it was uploaded to Snapchat all those years ago. But, um, yeah, so I took, like, a selfie, you know, just casual, and I didn't think anything of it. And then one day I was just going through my photos, and I looked back at the photo, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's a cute photo. What the fuck is that? That was, like, literally my reaction. And there was whatever it was, so I'm here, and whoever I was taking a photo was, whatever, whoever or whatever I was taking a photo with was, you know, here, so it was kind of like diagonal, kind of like there was a space here, and there was something standing between us. I could never figure it out. Um, the shape was literally like a man was standing, like, right, a man was standing, like, right here. Like, it was just, like, a neck, shoulder, it was kind of like this. It was just shoulders and neck which was a bit longer than mine and then like a very oval shaped head no hair no nothing it was kind of like um what's it called that guy's long up the slender man it was kind of like his figure in a sense but just standing behind me but just up here up no hair just an oval shaped head longish neck and shoulders it literally looked like there was just a man standing in between us i can still not understand i still don't understand that to this day because there was no reason why there should have been a weird lighting situation in that area how do you describe because um the light was like behind us like uh kind of like where this is um okay no that's a good example see those things above me the light was like that where it was it was on it was on the roof but if i stand back it was like on the roof like that so it was behind us so the light was shining on the back wall if the light was where it was then obviously it was that doesn't make sense but you know what i mean so i still to this day cannot figure that out because you know here's here's the light and here's the wall and there's just a shadow on it. How does that make sense unless there was something here? You know what I mean? Like there has to be something standing between the light and the wall to make that shadow. And there was nothing there. It was just me and whatever I was taking a photo with. So, still can't figure that out to this day, but that was in, as you guessed, the same house. So, as you can tell from part one and part two, there's been quite a few experiences that I've had in that house. I don't think I've ever really experienced anything like that in any other house that I've lived in. In this house that I'm living in right now that I'm going to be moving out of this week. But um, I've never had an experience in this house ever. And this is an old house so I'm kind of shocked. But I have not had one single experience in this house where I thought that something was paranormal. I've had a few different weird odd experiences at Tate's house which I might explain in a video. But here I haven't had anything and houses before this I don't really remember if I had anything because if I did it wasn't anything significant to remember if that makes any sense but I obviously remember a lot of the ones from that specific house because you know it stayed with me it kind of scarred me because a lot of it was scary you know what I mean um, especially at that age so oh my god I thought my recording stopped freaking 45 minutes of lost footage no it's okay it's still going thank you for watching and everything um hope you enjoyed the stories that I told um I didn't because I lived them for second hand lived them through other people I don't know but um yeah that's it for this video okay so that's the look I ended up creating hope you all like it thank you guys so much for watching I love you and don't forget everything's going to be okay in the end and if it's not okay it's not the end Cue the outro. Some things never change.